It's the evening after Nomination Day 2020 in Jamaica. The governing Jamaica Labour Party and the opposition People's National Party each nominated a full slate of 63 candidates. Then there were 13 nominations from independent candidates to contest the September 3 polls. What now on the final stretch before the September 3 general election? Hello, I'm Damian Mitchell. Well, joining us now to review Nomination Day 2020 are PNP campaign co-director Peter Bunting and Jamaica Labour Party spokesperson Kamina Johnson-Smith. Let me take you first then, Mrs. Johnson-Smith. How would you describe Nomination Day 2020 for the Jamaica Labour Party? Positive, morale boosting, uh, confidence boosting and a great platform for the rest of the campaign. Mr. Bunting, how was it for you? Tremendous energy on the ground. I think our candidates uh, put on a good show. And uh, as one of those candidates myself, I can say that I am buoyed by the feedback and the energy that I got from, from the crowds today. Interesting, because the president of the People's National Party, Peter Phillips, was also saying pretty much the same thing today when he was asked questions. But at the same time, the issue of the polls pointing in a different direction for the People's National Party is a matter that was put to him and is one of concern for some comrades. In the Caribbean, pollsters have got it dreadfully wrong mm -hmm. in, the, in the last few months. Mm -hmm. In St. Kitts, in Guyana, in Grenada, in Trinidad and Tobago, and a host of places. The polls that count are the polls on election. What, what then is the basis of your optimism, Mr. Bunting? Well, I have been to a few of these rodeos. This is my fifth um, election campaign. I've served in a variety of roles. I've been in campaign manager for the party in 2011. And I've, of course, been a candidate. Uh, this is my fifth time. So. I am not dismissing the polls. Uh, this poll suggests we have some work to do, but I am encouraged by the momentum that I feel growing over the last two weeks. And um, I'm you know, hopeful that the momentum will build as we go through the campaign and take us to, to victory and give Kamina a surprise. <sighs> Well, the Jamaica Labour Party leader, Prime Minister Andrew Holness, was also on the ground. He was in his West Central St. Andrew constituency, and he was equally confident. You know, there, there are many issues at play in the minds of the public. And the pandemic, without question, the government has handled it well. But the negative effect, especially the economic effects, will be telling on people right now. It's back to school. People have lost their jobs. Um, I'm, you know, seeing things circulating on social media regarding you know tourists the tourism industry that you know some sectors of the industry are benefiting while others can't because of the protocols so it's a very difficult time for the country and that's why the campaign is about recovery but then there is also now the issue Kamina uh, Johnson Smith of the COVID-19 and the fact that it could impact voters on election day, September 3. Is this a worry for the JLP? Well, as I've said in, in several different fora, COVID-19 should be a concern for each and every one of us. It is something that the government continues to be very focused on to ensure that every opportunity we have to spread the message of the importance of personal responsibility, personal safety, even while candidates are encouraged and have been distributing masks, uh, hand sanitizer, they've been telling uh, supporters, of course, to uh, impl implement social distancing, which is challenging in the emotional uh, vibrancy of, of a campaign. But uh, the government remains quite uh, clear that we must always be guided by the public health authorities uh, assessment of changes in our circumstances as at this time the uh, the larger numbers appear restricted to St. Thomas and Clarendon 
And we are hopeful that over the next two weeks, the extended quarantine will be a sufficient time for us to control uh, what has been uh, increasing numbers in those concentrated areas. Uh, so of course, Corona, always an issue and should always be a concern for us as the uncertainties of the disease are known globally. Uh, but we, we continue, of course, to honor the democracy which we, which we enjoy here in Jamaica and to seek, uh, notwithstanding, to seek a, a new mandate. Well, there were two candidates of the Jamaica Labour Party who were not able to make it to the polls or to the, to the nomination centre today. Bobby Montague in St. Mary Western and there was also Dr. Andrew Wheatley. Is there any provision for any other eventuality going forward? Well, the issue is not so much a provision for a particular uh, eventuality. We have to continue to monitor, continue to adjust strategically where necessary. And, of course, I mean, uh, Minister Montague and Dr. Wheatley exercised the highest examples of personal responsibility because neither person uh, was, in fact, engaged with, Dr. Creary, with Mr. Creary, Mayor Creary, and neither person um, has any symptoms, feels ill. And this was, in fact, just about two weeks ago. But they both determined that they would get tested, that they would just be sure beyond sure. Uh, and before they go back out on the campaign trail. So it's, it's important to take the decisions as situations unfold so that you're making the best decision in the circumstances, even as you look at, um, you, you cast your, your eyes forward and seek to look at possible strategies. Mr. Bunting, any concern for the People's National Party? Are there any contingencies being put in place? Well, of course we're concerned. And if I take my own uh, nomination as an example, we purchased um, thousands of masks to ensure that anyone who needed either on nomination day or an, on election day uh, will be available. We had our marshals uh, encouraging people to maintain a six foot distance. We had, you know, sometimes we stopped, you know, while we were walking up to the nomination center and if the crowd was sort of becoming less orderly and we stopped and we had marshals bring them back into line and uh, maintaining the discipline that we know is important. We want everyone to be safe. We don't want one person to get sick as a result of our election campaign. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it has been called. Uh, the, that the timing is not our choice. So we are going to contest it vigorously, but as safely and with the utmost vigilance to avoid unnecessary risks. Well, here's an issue emerging out of today's nominee. Sorry, you were trying to come in, Mrs. Johnson-Smith? Don't mind, because I, I was thinking broadly strategically and not um, in terms of the, the actual steps. I, I think I should make it clear that candidates have been distributing masks. They've been stimulating the local economies by, of course, purchasing local masks. But the Labour Party is also bringing in close to a million masks that will be distributed between now and the election. We will be um, ensuring, of course, while there are some that are branded for the excitement of, of, um, of our supporters, <laughs> we're also ensuring that we have sufficient unbranded to make sure on election day, every voter has the opportunity to vote who may or may not have a mask. And well, here's an issue emerging. Here's an issue emerging out of nomination day today. There were 13 independent candidates. How do you read into this, Senator, uh, Mrs. Johnson-Smith, in respect of a turnoff, perhaps, of the two main political parties? Uh, well, 13 is, I'm not sure I would take that uh, as, a, as a signal of persons being turned off. I'd take it as a symbol of the vibrancy of our democracy. Uh, it's good that there are persons nominating independently and that it, it people who feel passionately about service and uh, and and seeking an opportunity to be members of the parliament. But I don't think that's anything to take as a negative against the existing system. I see it as a positive. Unfazed, Mr. Bunting? Third party candidates generally have not done very well um, since independence. Uh, but there's, there's nothing wrong with adding a little dress and spice uh, to, to our democracy. And, you know, we welcome it. 
and another issue too, there were 105 males and 34 females. I'll allow Mrs. Johnson-Smith to address the issue of gender in the elections, since I know she has also been advocating for more women to be active in the politics. What do you make of the ratio this time around, 105 males to 34 females being nominated? You know, I thought you'd mix it up and, and have Peter go first, just for <laughs> the spice that he's talking about. <laughs> But clearly we've made progress. I'm particularly proud that our secretariat and leader have gone out and identified uh, young, vibrant, qualified uh, female candidates to come forward for the Jamaica Labour Party. We have a record 28% uh, uh, women, 18 women that will be um, at contesting the polls on September 3rd. And that's just below that international benchmark of 30%. Uh, the PNP, if I recall correctly, has 11, 11 or 12. Uh, there are four currently now. We have uh, eight. So we are looking to expand. We really, Jamaica needs to get to that point where we start to see more women in our parliament. And I am therefore very hopeful that our women will come through on the, on the day. Uh, they have competitive seats and uh, uh, they are winnable. So we look forward to them bringing the fight to the men and uh, to bringing home some record numbers uh, of women in our parliament on the evening of September 3rd. Mr. Bunting, 105 to 34, progress or not? I would start by saying the PNP has the distinction of being the only party in Jamaica that has had a female leader, a woman prime minister, the first lady prime minister in Jamaica, and, and we're very proud of, of that history. One of, not the only, but one of the few parties in the Caribbean uh, we, of course, have a lot of ground to cover. I, my own personal view is that there should be a minimum in terms of gender, as, as um, Kamina mentioned. Uh, generally speaking, a third to 40% would be an ideal minimum for either gender um, representation in parliament. And some parties have adopted that as part of their constitution. And I think it's something that we should look at. On the other hand, I always, you know, and from the days I was general secretary of the party trying to recruit female candidates, I have to acknowledge that all politics is, can be very harsh, can be very distasteful, and I completely understand why some women prefer to avoid it. Even though when you look at the cadres of party workers, it, generally speaking, Generally speaking, it's dominated by, by women. Well, we're now on the final stretch, Peter Bunting. You have indicated that there is some work for the PNP to do. How much work and what is your projection? We have set out our strategy. We are going on a seat-by-seat -seat basis. Our first um, imperative is to hold the seats that we have, and then we only have to pick up four or five or six to form a government. And that is the approach we're taking. We, we are uh, encouraged by the fact that the Jamaican electorate seems to be more, or, or they're putting more weight on the quality of the candidates in the constituency. Traditionally, people have been more uh, driven, their, their voting decision has been more driven by the party, um, the traditional party loyalty or the party leaders' popularity. But... Um, we're seeing that more and more candidates make a difference. And we are, this, we've decided we're fighting this on a seat-by-seat -seat basis. And we have some good candidates, and we are uh, hopeful that they will take home their seats. We're challenging Jamaica Labour Party incumbents. Mrs. Johnson-Smith, it's your final lap. What's the strategy? Every seat is in play for us. We are not overconfident uh, as a result of the polls. We take them as a positive signal but recognizing them for what they are, a snapshot at a particular point in time. Uh, we do note, however, that the numbers have been positive across all those who have polled and therefore take a positive signal from that. Uh, we know, however, that on the day, uh, no matter how well the government has performed, no matter how well uh, our leader is loved by the people of Jamaica and how our delivery of action uh, and commitments made and kept over the past four and a half years are, we have to get the ballots in the box. And therefore, uh, we are ensuring that our candidates are prepared. 
Uh, the experienced ones are ensuring that they share with the new prime minister, as you know, has been meeting with our new candidates to ensure that they're shored up and understand uh, how operations go on, uh, on election day. So we are looking at both operations and the feel good, the undeniable feel good that comes with the, uh, the uh, appreciation that the people of Jamaica have been demonstrating and have been expressing for Prime Minister Andrew Holness. Well, there are so many issues to follow up on, but we're out of time for today. Thank you so very much. Peter Bunting is the campaign co-director for the People's National Party and Kamina Johnson-Smith, spokesperson for the JLP campaign. I'm Damian Mitchell. Thanks for watching.